The other day, Apple announced what's coming in their new softwares later this year, from Vision OS to iPhone, iPad to Mac, and watchOS. And watchOS 11 is going to be bringing some quality of life features to the Apple Watch, so let's talk about them, because some of them Apple didn't even mention, and they just appear to be the best changes they could be making. So to start off, we have watchOS 11 coming to the Apple Watch Series 6, 7, 8, 9, Ultra, Ultra 2, and SE second generation. So you have a 4, 5, or a first gen SE, you are no longer supported, which I do think is very unfortunate as Apple seemed to keep the Series 3 around for years, but they were so quick to kind of drop off those 4, 5, and SE users when they got the chance. But then again, there's really nothing we can do now. They made the decision and just decided it can't handle it. But overall, any Apple Watch from the 6 to the Ultra 2 is all going to have the same experience. There doesn't seem to be any Apple intelligence features that you're going to miss out on just yet. I am curious to see if maybe with the Series 10 and Ultra 3, if there are going to be some Apple intelligence exclusive features to kind of compel users to upgrade. But let's get to the software because there is so much to talk about. And first of all, my favorite feature, can't believe it took this long, is the ability to have it automatically track our sleep and naps. So Apple didn't talk about this at all at their event. It's not even on their website, but in beta testing, a lot of people have found out that you can now track a nap or sleep without having to put it in a sleep focus mode, which is something I think is such a needed feature as personally, I can't tell you the amount of times I've taken naps and just to know how long those naps were or even see, you know, oh, you napped for an hour and a half today, and then you slept for six hours, you can kind of see, okay, because I took that nap, I slept less, which is kind of cool now you have the data, and most of the time, if you're taking a nap, you are wearing your Apple Watch, so I think it'll also give a lot of users who might not sleep track that ability now to sleep track if, you know, you fall asleep taking a nap with your Apple Watch on, you don't have to worry about it tracking and then putting it into sleep focus mode and doing all of that. But it'll also be useful if you just forget to turn on sleep focus mode. I know personally, I have my wind down set, but sometimes I go to bed before that or I'm just lying in bed and now my Apple Watch will know that and be able to essentially start tracking earlier so I won't miss out on any data, which is just so perfect. We also got the ability to pause Apple Watch rings, which why did this take us 11 software versions to get? But it's okay, it's finally here, we can finally pause our activity rings, which I know is just gonna be so useful whether you're sick or on vacation or whatever the case may be, as you won't miss out on any of your activity awards or streaks that you might have just because of the fact that you can't complete it. And the fact that this took 11 watch OS versions to get is definitely very interesting. But it's finally here, so I'm gonna stop complaining. But we also got the ability to set custom schedules as well. So if Monday and you're at more active than you are on Tuesdays, and then Wednesday you're same active as Monday, you can now essentially adjust your calories for the day of the week. So I know personally, you know, I go to the gym, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but on the weekends, I'm not working out. I can now have it automatically adjust to be a lower calorie threshold so that I can still complete my goals without losing track. We also got a new Vitals app. Now, this is essentially just a slimmed down version of the Apple Health app on your wrist. So this will allow you to see all of the data that you want to see. So if you, you know, using your blood oxygen, your heart rate, your body temperature, and how long you slept, your Apple Watch will now be able to tell you, hey, you're doing okay. Hey, pay attention to this. And if you have two Vitals out of range, it'll tell you, hey, you know, this is what's going on with your body. Make sure you look into it just because of the fact that if you're getting sick or something, that data was there on the Apple Watch in the past, but it was so hidden away in the health app that you essentially had to dig for it. Now you're going to just get a notification saying, hey, looks like you're doing good, or hey, maybe take it a little easier, check out this and that, um, which I just think is so cool, as you'll also get that baseline of yourself with all of these all of these markers. So you'll have the baseline for your heart rate, your blood oxygen, your sleep and all of that, which will just be so cool to have. And we're also getting a new training load feature, which plays right into this Vitals app, as it'll allow you to rate how hard your workouts were, and we'll also use some machine learning to figure out if it was an intense workout, not so intense, and kind of rank it for you so you can see how you're doing and if you need to take a recovery day or if you can keep pushing your body. Now, we also got a redesigned photos face, and now Apple didn't seem to show off too many new watch faces. We actually even lost the Siri watch face, so if you're keeping track out there, that's now two watch faces we have completely lost as we lost the old modular face from the Series 3 style watches and now the Siri watch face. But because of smart stack, Siri watch face is still around. It is just essentially taking a back seat and integrated everywhere. So I'm okay with losing that one. And the new photos face looks absolutely gorgeous as you essentially should have more time options and it modernizes an older watch face. 
And personally, I use the portraits to watch face just because it looked more modern than the photos watch face. Now that I can use the photos watch face as intended and have it be whatever pictures I want and all of that, it is definitely going to be very cool as you still have those settings kind of from the portraits watch face. They essentially just brought them now down, which is very cool to have. Now the smart stack is also getting an upgrade as it'll now have widgets essentially suggested based off of what's going on outside. So if it if it's going to rain soon, it can pop up in your smart stack saying, hey, make sure you bring an umbrella or it looks like you just got home. If you want to unlock your doors, play music and do all this and other Third-party apps can also have their live activities shown right in the smart stack on the Apple Watch. So if you have one on your iPhone, it'll now sync to your Apple Watch. And another feature Apple didn't even talk about is the fact that you can finally set custom vibrations for each setting. So it's similar to how you can on your iPhone where you can have it be a vibration for messages, mail, contacts, and everything can have its own thing. You can now do that on the Apple Watch. I am curious to see if this is going to trickle down to be a per, per contact basis, because I know personally for messages, this would definitely be something I would want to use just so I can tell if it's an immediate message I have to look at, whether it be from a family member or someone who might not, or one of my friends who I know I don't have to respond to them right away. Whereas with my family members, I may want to get back to them immediately in case it's important. Now you also get a check-in built into your workout. So if you're going for a late night run, you can just swipe over and start a check-in with a friend, which is just so nice to have as you can essentially just let someone know, hey, I'm going out for a run. Here's where I am. If I don't arrive home, you know, by X time, you can see all this data. It also has enhanced GPS positioning, which I definitely think is a very great feature to have no matter what Apple Watch you have, because if you look at your running routes or your workout, it's now available for more workouts such as rowing, boating, for such as rowing, so it'll be more accurate, so it can essentially tell you, you know, you went around the boat like this, around the around the lake like this, which is just so cool that you can now get that precise data, because um, I know with running and stuff like that, it is definitely great, but sometimes it isn't always accurate, as sometimes it's like, oh, you, you know, cut through this person's driveway, and it's like, no, you didn't, but with the Ultra Series and the L1 and L5 GPS, it's definitely gotten a lot better. There's also now custom workouts for swimming, so you can make your own workout, whether it be I'm going to swim three to four laps and then do something else. It can now automatically set that up and track. There's also now a Translate app on the Apple Watch, so if you're ever out and need to use it, and it'll also even suggest it in the Smart Stack if you allow it to use your location and it detects you're in a new country or you're in a different area where they may not speak the same language as you. And Double Tap is getting bigger, better, as third-party developers will now have access to the feature and you can use it in any app. Apple's kind of done done limiting it to being like, oh, we only want it to work when we say, they're saying to say, you want it to work in the weather app, it now works. You want, you know, it to work in a third-party app, they can now do that, which is just so cool to have. But overall, I definitely have to say this upgrade is a lot bigger than it initially seemed as we're still learning new features about it. So make sure you're subscribed for my whole full hands-on when watchOS 11 comes out later this year. As I definitely think with the Series 10 and Ultra three we're gonna have some major upgrades but let me know what your favorite feature is with a comment down below and while you're down there if you want to hit like and subscribe i'd greatly appreciate that and i want you to remember today's a good day to make a great day and i'll talk to you in the next one peace